Beth Shore pours over everything she knows about the secret life of Louis Sloten. To her, he'll always be the loving uncle from her childhood. But he was also a brilliant scientist who helped change the outcome of World War II and in doing so, sacrificed his life. The year was 1946. The world was at war and Louis Sloten, or so his family thought, was teaching at the University of Chicago. In reality, he was nowhere near there. I think that it was something they wanted to just keep very quiet. He was actually holed up in Los Alamos, one of a handful of scientists who'd secretly invented the atomic bomb and were still secretly refining it. If any one of them probably had leaked anything, it could have been, they could have been shot. And so the facade continued until one day it blew up in his face. Sloten was doing an experiment he called tickling the dragon's tail. He'd done it countless times before. Basically, he took two pieces of radioactive material and nudged them gently closer towards each other to see what kind of a chain reaction they would get. He wouldn't let them touch. If they touched, it would release plutonium. Well, one day his hand slipped and they did touch. Immediately, Sloten threw himself over the plutonium, taking almost all of the radioactive hit himself saving the lives of every other scientist in the room. He felt that it was his mistake and he had to rectify it and that was the only way he could. It had to be instantaneous. As Soon as he saw what was happening, he threw his body on it. Sloten slowly, painfully succumbed to the radiation, refusing painkillers so he could offer one last gift to science. For the days that he was coherent, four or five days, he was giving the medical information about what was happening to him so that someday maybe they could find a cure for it. He died seven days later. His corpse, still radioactive, was returned to Winnipeg in a casket lined in lead. Today, the world now knows what went on and what he did. Today, he's nominated for being one of the greatest Manitobans. Donna Carrero, CBC News, Winnipeg.